Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and uh, girls, welcome to episode, uh, you know, <laughs> what are we? Episode 5th, no, 44, gotta look it up, episode podcast, uh, Sphere Sundays, oh, why the fuck did I go there? That's where I used to upload it. Spit, I know, Spit, welcome to episode, take a guess, cunt, of the Spit Sundays podcast. It'll be written there. I don't even know why I say it, because it's fucking written in the title. It's like, oh, Lewis Spears uploaded a new thing. It's definitely this episode, and then I say it wrong, or I don't know what it is. So, you know what? Fuck you. It's episode fuck you. Um, This is the second time I've recorded this podcast. I recorded it... That's why it's coming out on Monday instead of Sunday. Oh, more like Speared Sundays. Fuck off. More like Speared Fuck You, all right? It's episode Fuck You of the Spearhead Fuck You podcast. You cunt, all right? Um, I recorded this for the first time on Thursday, so I get it up early for you Patreon cunts. Um, and I did an entire hour. It was a great podcast. Got all the way to the end, and then my SD card corrupted because it doesn't like filming for an hour. It just shit its pants, and then I didn't have time to record it. That was the only time I could. I, I fucking I left a, a two-hour gap so I could do the podcast, and then I just lost my shit, lost the footage, and that's why I'm recording it on uh, Monday at 1 p.m. So, but don't fret because... Well, fret if you want to. I'm not your fucking boss. You can fret if you want. The point is, this is uh, episode fuck you of the Speared Fuck You podcast. All right? So, what's been happening with me? Um, I've just looked at my notes that I, I've, I wrote down, and I'm just disappointed already about the shit that I have to talk about today. Um, I think... this. Is, I already know this is, this is going to get into a fucking... This is going to turn into a screaming thing. Uh, I think some of you cunts need to have a little refresher course on uh, an acceptable way to approach me and say hello. Because you know what? Love meeting you guys. Before I begin this, I want you to know that I love meeting you guys. Every time, not every time, because as you will hear, it's not always fucking handshakes and roses, all right? 99.9% of the time, when I meet one of you cunts in the street, it's awesome. Hey, Lewis, how you going? Love your stuff. Cool. Can I get a photo? Yeah, sure. Love doing that stuff. Genuinely makes my day. But every now and then, guys, oh, every now and then, there's one cunt who just doesn't get it, right? And I had one of those cunts, and this happens... Honestly, this happens once every six months where some guy just doesn't get it. <laughs> All right, so don't let this rant deter you from saying hello, okay? If you see me in the street, say hello. Just don't do it like this guy did, okay? Actually, before I tell you that, I'm going to tell you another, another one, okay? Every now and then, uh, some people will notice me in the street um, this is what happened. I went to Chadston. Don't know why. It's the biggest shopping center in uh, the country. Uh, hate shopping centers because there's too many fucking cunts there. There's too many people. Hey, do you want to, do you want to go to a big shopping center? Do you want to spend three hours trying to find a parking space just so we can buy something that's more expensive than it would be online? Yeah. No. Don't know why I went there. I went there. Oh, actually, I do know why I went there. I went there because... I got the idea in my head that I really needed to play the new Pokemon game on my new 3DS. And I was like, look, I could uh, buy it online, pay for express shipping. But even then, I'd have to wait two days. Couldn't handle that. So I just went, fuck it, we're going to Chatty. And then I went to Chadston. I picked it up. I bought it. And uh, that's when this happened. So every now and then, guys, this is, <laughs> this is what happens um, when people notice me in the street. Most of the time, they go, hey, Lewis, how you going? Can I get a photo? Love your stuff. Cool. That's awesome. But every now and then, uh, I was waiting in line at Boost Juice. Wanted to get myself a nice Boost Juice. Wanted to juice it up. Nothing better than a good Boost Juice, guys. Not sponsored, but get yourself a Boost Juice. It fucking makes you feel good. So I'm waiting in line to get my fucking Boost Juice from all the 16-year-old girls working there. Sam! Tim! Sarah! 
all that shit. So I'm sitting there waiting in line and uh, there's a group of three guys who come in line behind me. And I'm like, oh, that's a strange thing for three friends, three male friends to do. Get a boost juice with the boys. Boost juice with the boys. So they're behind me. And this happens to me every now and then. Sometimes people know my face. They recognize me. They want to say hello. But they're too much of a pussy to initiate the conversation. So instead, what they will do is say my name in conversation, hoping that I will hear it notice turn around and then they can go oh lewis you looked at me first so now i can say hi all right it's the pussy's way of saying hello and they think they're being sneaky so that, so these these three guys are standing behind me they're talking oh man I, I, we're we're in line for booze juice and standing in front of us is lewis spears and then his mate goes yeah, man, it's pretty cool being uh, with in Boost Juice. This is literally quotes, what they're saying. I'm not making this up. This is literally what they're saying. They're, oh, yeah, it's pretty cool standing in line. I'm going to get a strawberry, whatever the fuck. But the main thing is I'm standing behind Lewis Spears. And they kept saying it a little bit louder each time. And let me tell you guys, I am not the penis game. Okay, that's a fucking game you play in class when the substitute teacher is there and you go on penis. And she doesn't notice, so you go penis, and then she kind of notices, and then one dickhead like me takes it too far and goes, penis! Okay, I'm not the penis game. I'm a fucking human being, and let me tell you something, that shit happens all the time, and uh, you think you're being smart, you think I'm going to turn around, let me tell you something, everyone who thinks about trying that shit, I can hear you 100% of the time, no matter how quiet you are, you're saying my name, I know my name. I hear you 100% of the time and I turn around exactly 0% of the time. I got my boost juice and I fucking walked away. You want to talk to me? Talk to me like a man and say hello. <laughs> I got no problem with talking to you cuz just say hi. It's not that hard. You don't have to gather around in a fucking three-way trying to summon me with magical incantations by gradually saying my name louder and louder just tap me on the shoulder and go hey man that's it that's all you're gonna do so anyway after that i walked away that didn't annoy me that much that just kind of made me laugh because i was like well you know i'm not gonna stop my day so that you can get a photo that's your job. You want to talk to me? Come say hello. I don't know who you are. I mean, I'm sure that you're a nice person, but I got shit to do. I got Pokemon to catch. I'm trying to fill up the fucking Pokedex. I'm a very busy man. So say hello. Just don't try and fucking summon me. Anyway, that did annoy me. <laughs> Later on, though, this did. So I'm with my girl. We're still at Chadston. Still hating my life. Uh, got my boost juice. Got a little bit of sushi. Sitting down at a table with my girl. We're both eating. And some guy comes up to me. <laughs> this is the worst, the, the worst interaction I've ever had with uh, one of you guys. And you know what? I'm not even going to say it's one of you guys because he clearly didn't like me that much. And you'll understand why. Okay. So this guy comes up to me. I'm eating my food. I got food in my mouth. He comes up to me, he taps me on the shoulder. I look at him and he goes, uh, hey, uh, Liam, bad start. We're off to a fucking shitty start. He called me Liam. And I was like, mm, you fucked it. You fucked it already. <laughs> you fucked up my name. You fucked up the interaction. Okay, because clear right away, I already know this guy doesn't like my shit. He doesn't actually know who I am. He's probably seen a fucking viral video of mine and he just wants the photo so he can post on Facebook for likes. He'll never see a show. He doesn't watch my shit. He's just in it for the likes. So that's straight off the bat. I already know everything about this guy and how he revolves around my shit, which is fine. I don't expect people to like me, but if you want a photo, at least pretend you like me. <laughs> you know what I fucking do. So he walks up to me and he goes, uh, Liam? I'm like, bad start, man. We're off to a shitty fucking beginning. It's like the, it's like the horse jumping out of the starting reins and he just falls over and immediately breaks its leg. 
It's like, oh no, I'm gonna have to put this conversation down in front of everyone. <laughs> so, <laughs> Liam, there is no one on Facebook making videos called Liam. Anyway, so he goes, and I wasn't a cunt to him. I, I remained polite, even though he fucked up my name. He goes, uh, hey, because I thought, oh, well, maybe he was just nervous. And he goes, hey, man, Liam? And I was like, nah, that's not me. And then he goes, oh. And then he acted really confused. And then I thought, oh, I'm an arrogant cunt. Obviously, he doesn't think, he doesn't want a photo or he doesn't want to talk to me. He just actually th must have thought I look like someone he knows called Liam. But then he goes, oh, you're the, the comedian, the Liam. I'm like, it's, no, already established my name's not Liam. You don't have to fucking t try and tell me that my name's Liam. It's not. And I said, no, that's not my name. And then he goes, oh, what's your name? And I said, Lewis Spears. And he goes, oh, and he had still no idea who I am. But he knew I was the... But then he goes, oh, uh, you, the uh, comedian? And I said, yes. And he went, yeah, man, yeah, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> and he had no idea who I am. Anyway, he goes, can I get a photo? And I'm like, sweet, that's fine. Let me just finish my mouthful. Let's do a photo. Awesome. Still not annoyed. So I stand up from my fucking food to take a photo with this guy he goes to my girl, can you take the photo? She's like, sweet, because she does that often. So she stands up for, away from her food to take the photo with us. And then this is in the middle of the Chadston food court, okay? It gets fucking worse. Middle of the Chadston food court. We're surrounded by 300 people walking around like fucking headless birds trying to maneuver around everyone because it's so packed. And then he goes... He's probably, he's 18 years old, 18 or 19. He looks like a young kid. Thank fuck you didn't look 15. He goes, cool, man. So I'm going to take off my pants for the photo. And I went, I'm sorry. He goes, I'm going to take off my pants for the photo. It's just, it's a thing I do. And I was like, oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> just, and immediately from there, I was like, okay, the cunt doesn't know who I am. He doesn't know my fucking name, doesn't know what I do, but he wants a photo and he wants me to play along where he takes his fucking dick out in the middle of the food court in Chadston. And I was just, I just, guys, I did it. You'll be ashamed to know I did the photo, but wasn't excited about it. <laughs> So I'm like, oh yeah. I just said he goes, oh, I, I take I take my pants off in in photos, man. It's a thing I do. And I just went, oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and it was weird. It was like he was asking for my permission to take his pants off, and I just wasn't like I wasn't gonna be like, yeah, man, please do take your pants off in the middle of the fucking shopping center. I would love to be seen with a person doing that. That'd be great. Please do that. Dude, please take your pants off in the food court so we can get a photo and then you can walk away. And then when you leave because you got a photo with me, everyone around me stares at me trying to work out if I'm a movie actor, except you just took your pants off. So everyone's going to assume I'm a fucking porn star. Please do that. Would love it. Be sick. Anyway. I just, he goes, oh, it's a thing that I do. I'm like, oh, is it? And then he goes, yeah, man, they call me the walking inspiration. <laughs> I just went, they call me, he goes, they call me the walking inspiration. And I just went, oh, do they? Do they really, mate? Do they call you the walking inspiration? Uh, Liam? Can I take my pants off in a photo with you? Who the fuck looks at that guy and goes, man, what a walking inspiration. Fucking what a walking inspiration to sterilize the human race. That's what I, that maybe that was just the first half of the sentence he told me and I interrupted him. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking walking inspiration. So anyway, I'm like, 
And he goes, can I take my pants off for the photo? And, uh, and already this interaction is going too long. So I'm like, yeah, fine, do it. I don't care. And so he takes his fucking pants off in the middle of Chadston food court. My girl takes the... Oh, no, wait. So he takes his pants off and I'm thinking in my head, you know what? I'm going to be a part of this photo. That's fine. I'll be in the photo, but I am not going to look excited about it. All right? I'm not going to be standing next to some cunt with his dick out. Well, he had underwear, but you can see the Im- you, see, you can see the outline of his fucking cock. All right, I'm not going to be standing out there in a food court with someone with his fucking underwear out, with a smile on my face. So I did the most disappointed expression that I think I've ever done in my life, which I thought would be funny because then he would be standing next. To- I mean, that's that's the joke, right? Hey, I took a photo with this guy and he was unimpressed with it. That's funny to me anyway. So I do this fucking expression, not to make fun of the kid, just to at least give him a photo that's a little bit funny. And I do this face that was so... When I looked at the photo, when he reviewed the photo and I saw my face, I was shocked at how disappointed and... uh, I didn't even know the word. How disappointed and unenthused I looked <laughs> in the photo that I went to the bathroom when I got home and tried to recreate the face and I couldn't do it. I mean, I looked like... I think that's... I think that's... I'm trying to pull the face. I think that's what I look like. Like I look like a sigh. <laughs> I look like a disappointed sign from a Japanese father when his son comes home with like a B plus. How can you do this to my family? How can you do this to us? B plus? That's what you bring home? Fucking B plus? (laughs) That's what my face looked like. An Asian father reacting to a B-plus from his kid, all right? So we take the photo. My girl takes it, gives the kid his phone. He pulls his pants back up, gets the phone. Actually, no, he didn't pull his pants back up. That's, That's right. That was fucking weird. So my girl gives him back his photo, and while he's reviewing the photo, his pants are still down. Everyone in the fucking food court is staring at us. And he looks at the photo... And he sees how disappointed and unenthused the expression on my face is. I see it hurt his feelings. (laughs) And he goes, oh, can we take another one? (laughs) My expression hurt his feelings so much that he wanted to do it again. It was like he got as close as he could to asking me to smile in the photo, but even he knew that was too much to ask. I've already standing there while this fucking stranger has no pants on in a photo with me, and he wants to take it again because I'm not, like, smiling and pointing at his dick and being like, wow, isn't this funny? Love this joke. Classic no pants in a photo gag. So I'm like, yeah, at this point, I'm fucking done. I just want this to be over. I'm like, yeah, sweet. Take it again. And uh, I give my the phone to my girl. She takes it. I do like... I look. I don't look like a sigh anymore. I look like the inhale before the sigh. I still look. I still look very disappointed, but not as inhumanly unenthused as I looked in the first photo. She gives him his phone back. He can tell that we're both just done, and then he goes, "Cool man." Doesn't even say thank you. He just he looks at it. He goes, "Cool man," and then he starts pulling his pants up. And I sit down to finish my fucking food. And then he goes, starts telling me, Oi, no homo. (laughs) 
<laughs> he goes, it's, it's, and he says it like eight fucking times. He goes, oi, no homo. It's only gay if you don't say no homo. And I just went, I just said, oh yeah, is it? <laughs> And he just keeps telling me that it's not gay because he said no homo. And he starts pulling his pants up and he and he goes, oh, I do it because I've got good quads. And he didn't. He didn't have good quads. I had a look. Didn't have good quads at all. He looked like he'd been going to gym for six months. And he just started to see his first fucking period of gains, his beginner gains. He's like, oh, I'm fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, you're not. Keep you, even if you were Arnold Schwarzenegger, put your fucking dick away. <laughs> and he says no homo to me like eight fucking times. And then he's like, oh, I'll leave you alone now. I can tell you're annoyed. <laughs> I just went, oh, can you? <laughs> Oh, fuck. And then he walks away and my girl's just like, do you want to go home? And I was just like, yeah, let's go home. And that was my fucking trip to Chadston. Oh, shit. But it didn't, it, it, it's just, just... That's your crash course on how to approach me and how to say hello. It's really easy. Just say hi. Just say hi and don't take off any item of clothing. And let me tell you, if any of you podcast cunts come up to me and try to take your pants off as an in-joke, oh, it's funny because you talked about it on the podcast about how much you hated it, so now me doing it is actually an acceptance of your uh, distaste for people taking their pants off, and now it's an in-joke that we can laugh at together. No, it won't be. I won't take the fucking photo. Oh, man. So as we're walking outside of Chadston, me and my girl are just completely fucking baffled at this kid. One, calling me Liam. Two, taking his pants off. Three, making me take the photo again because I didn't look happy about him having his pants off. Four, saying no homo like eight times. And then five, walking away without saying goodbye or thank you. Liam. But on the way out, <clears throat> on the way out, there's these two, there's these two guys sitting at a bench. One of them goes, hey, Nebs, love your stuff, man. They both jump up. They shake my hand. Keep up the good work. They sit back down. And that was, that was it. Perfect. It, perfect execution. That made my whole day better. I was like, oh, cool. How polite. Love that shit. If they asked for a photo, would have loved it. Yeah, boys, jump in. Let's do a selfie. I'll do whatever you want. <clears throat> and you know what gets me? At the end of the day, if that kind who took his pants off didn't call me Liam, I would have been so on board with the photo. <laughs> I would have taken my pants off. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, guys, that's the end of that rant. Don't let it deter you from saying hello. I would like to reiterate, I love meeting you guys. I just hated that, okay? Every now and then, you're going to hate one of the cunts. <laughs> oh, fuck. I need my inhaler. Oh, man. Liam. They call me the walking inspiration. Fuck. Who? Who the fuck calls you that? Ted Bundy? <sighs> All right. What else are we talking about today? Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah. So, uh, fucking, 
It's time for the New Year's resolutions. So I like doing these every single year. I don't give a fuck about all these people. Oh, New Year's resolutions are bullshit. No, they're not. Having a goal for the entire year, one of the most noble things you can do. If you can actually follow through with that shit, New Year's resolutions are only bullshit because cunts write them down and then go, oh, that was fun. I like writing. I like the writing it down bit. Not so much of a fan of the doing it part. <laughs> So, like, what I like to do, it's becoming a podcast tradition, and by that I mean I've done it once before, because it hasn't been going for years. Um, I'm going to go through the New Year's resolutions that I set last year, and I'm going to see how many of them I achieved. And this is going to be brutal, because I'll read out all the ones that I did do, and the ones that I did not do. Um, if you would like to go back and listen to me setting the New Year's resolutions, and reading through the ones that I set Two years ago, it is from episode 52 of the podcast at around the 15 minute mark, I believe, is when I start talking about it, is it? That I'm not tell you guys about. Yeah, around the 13 minute mark of episode 52, that's when I start talking about it. And uh, <clears throat> I had to listen to that, I wrote down all of the goals that I set and uh, I actually have them all written down in my little note notepad as well. And I'm going to go through them. Now, when I was reading it at the time, if you go back and listen to it now, you will hear that some of them were secret goals because I didn't want to tell you about them or they were just giant projects that hadn't been revealed yet, but they were still goals to me. I'm going to reveal all of the secret goals that I set last year, I believe. So, there, there were f three or four, four secret goals. All right. First secret one, because I set these in January. So the first secret one was release the biggest independent comedy special in Australian history, because I decided to do the comedy special about two years ago, and I knew that I was going to set it in motion in 2017, and uh, <clears throat> the original plan was to release it late 2017, but then I realized that that timing didn't make sense because it was just too much stuff, so I moved the dates it's going to be coming out early this year. So I'm going to count most of them as a tick because everything happened. We just moved the dates a little bit. So the first secret goal was release the biggest independent stand-up special in Australian history. That will be complete uh, early this year. So I'm giving that one a tick. The other secret goal was raise $10,000 for the comedy special. Uh, smash that one. Thank you very much, guys. <coughs> Um, another secret was to screen the comedy special in a movie theater. That will also be happening upon release. And the final secret goal was to sell 15,000 copies, get 15,000 downloads. That one is half complete, I think, thanks to the crowdfund. So I'm hoping that upon release, I can fulfill the other half of that goal. That's how many people I want to watch this thing as a minimum throughout this year. And I think that's totally possible. That'd be the fucking coolest thing if I can do that. Um, <clears throat> all of the other goals were public ones. So let's do the, uh, the brutal part of reading through which ones I did and which ones I didn't. So I got all of the comedy special ones, except for the one that's impossible because it hasn't released yet. That's pretty good. All right. Uh, do everything with my own money, independently funded, do it all on my own dollar. Yes, I did that. Uh, no management, no agents for the whole year, funded my tour, funded the comedy special, funded all my videos, the merchandise, fucking every part of my business and everything that I do is funded with my own money and that money exclusively comes from you cunts, no other sources, which is... Uh, Really amazing. Thank you very much for enabling me to stay independent. I will be staying that path all through 2018. Um, <clears throat> now, what else? Uh, I wanted to get 300,000 subscribers. I did not achieve that. I got to 164,000. I think the main thing with that was my consistency on YouTube. Like, Everywhere else, I re like acro across the board, I release more content than I've ever done, but it wasn't all on YouTube, if you get what I mean. Like I did a show, I did the podcast pretty much every week. Um, I put out a, you know, a two-hour radio show every single day, but uh, just YouTube videos, I wasn't as consistent as I would like to be. <clears throat> so I did not reach 300,000 subscribers. Bummer. Um, 
Another goal was to get on television for my work legitimately without hoaxing them, whether it was an interview or a quiz show or any even somebody talking about something that I did, anything like that. I didn't get that, but I got a radio show. So, I mean, I'm, I, I guess... I mean, radio was not a goal at all of mine last year, but I got a whole show, so... I don't know. I guess the main goal behind the TV shit was to get some kind of thing on mainstream media and I got a radio show which is better than just getting talked about on TV. So I didn't get the TV goal but I got something even better. So I don't know. I'll, I'll count that kinda um, <clears throat> but not really. Um, I wanted to perform in America. Now that goal was set before I realised how fucking impossible it is to get a performance visa in America. So that didn't happen and honestly I don't see that happening for a number of years. Especially with how uh, strict Donald Trump's immigration laws are. Like you can go there and travel and be a tourist, whatever. But performing and actually you know, doing your job over there, very, very hard if you're not American. So... That one I didn't achieve and I don't think it really had anything to do with me. But um, I do have performances lined up in the UK. So again, didn't specifically get that one but got something very similar. Um, Another goal was to get 20,000 listens on every episode of the podcast. I didn't get that. And I think if you listen to episode 52, when I read that out loud, I was like, fuck... That sounds almost impossible. I might have to modify that goal a little bit. Didn't modify it, and I was right. That was fucking impossible. (laughs) But um, the podcast did grow quite a lot. So 20,000 is still um, a goal for mine, but maybe not for this year. Um, So that's all of the, basically all the things I did not achieve, um, minus a special. So uh, I wanted to stay sober. That's easy. I did that. Didn't have any drinks. Uh, I wanted to get fit. I wanted to weigh 85 kilos. I got to 75. So I put on five, um, which, you know, I it's it's okay, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I didn't achieve that one. Um, I wanted to perform rap live on stage. I got to do that. That was fucking sick. Um, learn how to box. I didn't because... Um, looking into it, it's so expensive to learn how to box, which makes sense. I mean, it's such a one-on-one thing. It's crazy expensive. So, I don't know, maybe this year I can do that, afford that. Um, Another goal was to sell 2,000 tickets to my tour. I absolutely smashed that one. Thank you very much to everyone who came to try and stop me. And the final goal was to justifiably buy something ridiculous uh, as a reward if I achieved most of the things. And I did do that. What did I get? Oh, I got myself a fucking Gucci belt. So that's a justifiably, justifiably ridiculous purchase that I got um, to reward myself for <laughs> paying myself $200 a week and eating shit for most of 2017. So yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy with all the shit that I did last year. Um, all of the, just about all of the super important career goals I achieved, except for 300,000 subscribers, which was realistic, so that's, I should have done that, and 20,000 downloads on every podcast, I think that was just fucking impossible, so I'm not too annoyed about that, not achieving that one, other than that, I'm super happy with all the shit that I achieved, because that's how I kind of set goals, I like to, instead of setting like three things that have to get done, and if they don't get done, I'm super disappointed with myself, I like just fucking setting like 15 goals and thinking to myself, if I can achieve 70% of what I've written down this year, that will be an incredible year. And that's kind of how I set my goals for myself. Like I don't just do one, uh, one, you know, incredibly specific, super broad, incredibly broad thing. Like, I have to make this much money or I have to sell this many tickets and that's like the only goal. I don't do that because that, I would rather look at everything that I'm doing holistically and be like, all right, well, if I want to sell this many tickets, I should need this many subscribers to do that. So I will make those two things a goal because if I achieve the subscribers thing, 
uh, I should be able to sell the tickets. But if I don't achieve the subscribers or, or if, if I achieve the subscribers thing, but I don't sell those tickets, I still have the subscribers goal. Do you know what I mean? That's what I try and do where I set like a, a, a wide spread of goals that all relate to the main giant dream that won't be achieved for the next 20 years. And, you know, hopefully by doing that, you slowly take, you know, 70% steps towards the giant fucking impossible thing instead of just, you know, setting one goal, fucking it up, and then not moving to forwards at all. That's how I kind of look at it. So, <clears throat> with that being said, I highly encourage you cunts to set some New Year's resolutions and uh, try and stick to them if you can. Now... I have my notebook for this year, for all of this year's goals, and I'm going to be reading them out to you. I'm pretty sure I can read all of them. None of these are secret. I don't know. Let me have a look through it. Where are we? Goals for 2018. All right. So, obviously, 15,000 copies of my comedy special. I want to get that many downloads. That's clearly still a goal. Um, next year... I would like to have 5,000 people come to my tour. I'll be touring later in the year. I normally tour in March, April, but I'll be touring in September this year because the comedy special will come out early and I don't want to do the special and the tour. It's too much promo. Uh, plus, I want to try touring later in the year. I think it makes more sense. Um, so, yeah, I would like 5,000 people to come to my next tour. That's uh, a big step up from 2017, but I think it's possible like I said, if I achieve the other fucking things. Um, I would like to make two positive moves forward in radio. So whether that's moving to a better time slot or, um, you know, I don't know, two positive, move, two positive moves forward. So if we move to... A different, a better time slot, and then we move to an even better one, or if we get a different kind of show, or whatever. I don't really know specifically what that looks like because I don't like. I have a main goal of getting on drive radio, but obviously that is probably years away. So, I, the in terms of the pathway towards that, I would like to make two positive moves forward. I will determine what those are as I get them, and if I deem them to be big enough moves to be like, yeah, got that one. Um. I would like to get 300,000 subscribers. That is going to be a giant goal of mine and the main focus of this year. I think the reason I didn't do that last year was just because of the amount of new shit that I did last year. Like, when I look back on it, I did so many fucking new things. Like, I did the tour, which was the biggest thing I've ever done, and it was organized by me um, independently. Sorry, my girl did it, but, you know, we did it together. So, that was a new thing, and it was huge and, you know, selling tickets and all that kind of shit. That that alone is so much promo that it's hard to focus on putting out weekly videos as well. And then after that, it was the launching the crowdfund or getting the crowdfund ready and then launching the crowdfund, promoting that until it was over. And then after that, the crowdfund was over. Then it was selling tickets to the comedy special while at the same time organizing the film crew and what cameras we need and all that kind of stuff with the director. And then after that was filmed, it was um, the the aftermath of it, like editing and blah, 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 and posting out merch. And then, you know, and then it was fucking Christmas. Like it was, it was, and, and all throughout the whole crowdfund process, all of a sudden I was doing a daily radio show, something I had never done before. Uh, with Luke. So it was like so many new things in like three month successions that it, it kind of put put everything else to the side, like the staple and the basics of what I do, which is, you know, YouTube and Facebook, those kind of fell to, to the side to learn and focus and, and make sure these new things went smoothly. But I think this, this year, 2018, I don't have any giant new things, you know, like I'll have the radio show, which I now know how to do, um, the comedy special now, I mean, it just has to come out, uh, I mean, we have to edit it and that, but that's not super labor intensive, um, that should only take a couple of weeks, um, so the radio show, the comedy special needs to come out, and then after the special, 
I mean, I don't have anything until the fucking tour. So I think that this year, because the pre- previous three years was like a giant run up to the comedy special. Like I knew I was going to do that for years and years. So it was all about getting everything in position to launch that crowdfund and and get good enough at stand up to warrant a special. Um, so now that it's done and all that has to happen now is the release of it, I think it's just a real return to basics, uh, which is perform live, put out videos, do a tour and the radio show. And that's like kind of my 2018 is how I'm, I'm viewing it, is, is the main goal of it is to continue all the things that I'm doing, get better at them and get much bigger online. Those are the, that's, I think that's the main focus of this year. But I don't know, who the fuck knows? I mean, radio came out of nowhere. There could be a giant project that I have no idea is going to happen that could happen. But um, like I said, main goal, internet shit so 300,000 subscribers and 200,000 Facebook likes I think those two goals are incredibly realistic and achievable um that one's a secret goal uh I would also like to get 20,000 podcast downloads per episode which I think now this year is still quite hard but quite attainable as well so we'll see how we go with that one I'm not going to kick myself if I don't get it I would like to get pretty close to it at least. Um, Also, this one is a big life goal and it has been too fucking long. I need to get my driver's license and purchase a car. It's time. It's time, ladies and gentlemen. I am sick of being a piece of shit. Today, I had to go home from my girl's house and I had to get a replacement bus to one station and then a replacement bus to my station. And it was about 50 minutes on our fucking bus with the uh, with the other type of losers that have to take the bus and I fucking hated it and I was like you know what I'm 23 years old it's time to get my fucking license I don't even need the minimum hours anymore all I have to do is pass the test so I think what I'm going to do is is fuck it I'm just going to pay for lessons once a week from the RACV that's all I'm going to do super easy once a week get some cunt to come over. I mean, I don't have a car. doesn't matter. They can bring a car over. I will fucking sit in it, learn how to drive. And when I can learn how to drive, I will figure out how to get the money to purchase a car. And then I'll have a car and my life will be so much better and everyone can stop complaining about how how much I'm a fucking invalid, which I am. So I need a car and a license. Um, The next one is perform in a mainstream medium. So to that, that, to me, means perform stand-up comedy and have it filmed on a, a TV show or a, or a gala or do a quiz show or um, get interviewed or anything like that on television where I'm doing comedy on somebody else's thing on TV because they want me there, not because I tricked them. Not that I'm not going to be tricking people <laughs> this year, but uh, you'll see I have a couple of plans for that. But uh, I would also like to do that legitimately at the same time. Um, this year, I would like to release 50, main, 50 YouTube videos on my main channel. That is how I think I'm going to get to 300,000 subscribers. I'm going to be borderline weekly every week of the year. I have a yearly calendar in my fucking room mapped out with the first three months of content that I want to release and uh, I think it's looking good. In fact, this whole... uh, I'll I'll talk about this month when I go through these goals. So, 50 YouTube videos on the main channel. Uh, That one's a secret goal. Um, That one's also a secret goal. Secret. Oh, I want to finish reading the Horace Heresy, the science fiction books that I'm reading. There's about... 30 or so books left. I'm about 12 or 13 books in. I want to finish it this year. Uh, I think I read about 20 books, 2017. So I'm going to try and up it to 30. Um, I want to complete my comic book library as well. That's a, that's a big goal of mine because uh, a couple of years ago, I stopped buying single issues and I started buying trade paperbacks, which is like six single issues collected into one. And they just sit on your shelf really nice. And I just figured that because buying single issues, you're pedantic about protecting them. You got to keep them in, in like cardboard folders with plastic over them in boxes. And they also have ads in them, which I hate fucking seeing. So 
Um, I just started buying trades. So what I would like to do so I can get rid of all of my single issues, I would like to buy all of the trade issues of the comics I already have and like backdate it. I don't have many, but I would like to just complete that without fucking, you know, breaking the bank, which, you know, another boring nerd goal for you cunts. Uh, secret goal, secret goal. I would like to get a 100 kilogram deadlift. Uh, that's how much I want to lift. 100 kilograms as a deadlift. I think I can do that. I used to do that back when I was a personal trainer. I want to get back to that point. I think at this, at the moment, I'm deadlifting 85. So, I mean, it's not a ridiculous jump in weight, but I think instead of setting like goals for how much I should weigh, I've started to set goals about how much I should be able to lift. And that, in my head, helps me, motivates me more rather than stepping on the scales once a week and being like, oh, I've only put on half a kilo, this is hard. I'd rather just eat a bunch of food so I can lift more rather than so I can be heavier. I don't know, it just motivates me more. Just a shift in thinking that I've found helps me. Um, oh, that's a big secret goal. So is that one. Um, and I would like to perform stand-up comedy uh, weekly, if possible, um, which is po- which which you know you can do in Melbourne. So I'm going to try my best to get on stage once a week, put out a video once a week. So yeah, um, that's that's pretty much it, guys. I suppose the main things that will affect you is I'm going to be I'm going to try and put out 50 videos this week on the main channel plus second channel vlogs in the podcast. Blah blah. They don't count. Um, and I want to get to 300,000 subscribers. Uh, that's the main thing. And uh, and the comedy special. So yeah, those are my New Year's resolutions or, or I don't call them resolutions. Those are my goals for 2018 um, in my fucking notebook that I will keep on me the whole year. And that's what I want to do. I think they're all possible. I think you will agree. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure I can reveal all of the secret goals when I do this at the end of the year or early next year. Uh, as I do. So yeah, those are my resolutions, you you dog cunts. Uh, I hope that you continue to help me achieve them. Um, all right, what else are we going to talk about? Oh yeah, I wanted to say that no, I'm not going to do a fucking lure review on the Logan Paul shit, finding that dead body in, in the woods. I thought about doing it and then I was just like, you know, all I'm going to be doing is saying exactly what everyone else is saying and further s- spreading footage of some poor cunt who killed himself in the forest. Um, and it's, it's, I don't know, I just don't, I just don't think I could make it particularly funny. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just a horrible thing that he did in the woods, and it's really fucked up that he thought it would be a good idea. Um, my brief thoughts on it are, I don't care at all that Logan Paul laughed while he was and made jokes and shit while he found the body. Uh, I would probably have done the same. Um, I, like I try and put myself in his situation. Let's say I went to the suicide forest to film some shit, which I think is totally fine. I think it's absolutely fine if you do it in a respectable way. And uh, if I were to go there and film, I would do a history thing of it. I wouldn't do a vlog, but you know, everyone does their own thing. But I would love, I, 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 would, I, I wouldn't love to do it. I'm, I wouldn't do it. But I would do a thing, you know, covering the history of it. I would film. I'd maybe walk around. But if I found a body and cameras were rolling, this is what I think I would do. I would probably be so shocked that I would keep the cameras rolling. I would probably make a whole bunch of jokes, almost do the same thing that Logan Paul did because I don't think that you have a clear head when you find someone who's just killed themselves. I think you'd be super shocked by it. Um, I'd probably do a similar thing where you just you just default to oh film everything, make a couple of jokes. You just go on autopilot. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, as soon as I left that area, as soon as I got home and sat down, and that experience has left the the sh- like the shock has left. There is no fucking way I would ever release that. Not even blurred. I, I, what, I don't care about him laughing at the moment, at the time, whatever, making jokes, filming the guy. That to me is just probably what most people would have done. But then after that, to sit down and edit it with a clear head and then watch it all back and then think to yourself, this is going to be a good video. That is the point where I go, that's fucking gross. That's fucking disgusting that he would do that. Um, and I'm very glad that the internet agrees, but 
Um, I also saw the video, I think, before people who who are not subscribed. You know how like when, when I release a video, you know, you guys watch it and then it might go viral and people who don't know who I am will see it. And then those people will either like it and become like you guys or write a comment about they hated it. Um, so like the inner circle. So I saw it when the video was still only being viewed by his fans and it had hardly any dislikes at all. Most people liked it. There were a bunch of comments going, oh, this video is great, amazing, suicide prevention, it's so good that you did this, blah, 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 all that kind of shit. People, his fans fucking loved it. They don't care about it. And they will defend him to the ends of the earth because they're 10 years old and they don't know better. And that's just how fan bases work when you're dealing with people under 15. They're fanatical and they don't, they're not adult humans yet. They don't have consequences, you know. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're just not grown up, so they don't see the consequences of shit because they're children. Um, so, he'll be totally fine. Um, what I think is bullshit is that YouTube allowed it to trend because uh, you know they saw the video. And also, YouTube are giving him special treatment when it comes to in following the rules. If I did that, my channel might be deleted. Um, he's not even going to get a strike. I think he should definitely get a strike for it. Um, and they should have taken his video down as, as soon as they saw it. It shouldn't have been allowed to trend. Um, but they will do nothing. And his YouTube fucking red movie that they're paying him for will still come out and they'll still promote it. Um... Because for some reason, somebody finding the body of a man who had just killed himself, filming it, putting that footage out there, joking about it and making light of it um, on YouTube is totally fine. But when PewDiePie said nigger, uh, that's worse. So I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not, not here to defend PewDiePie, but uh, I think that the suicide thing is definitely worse and they're being very hypocritical and obviously pandering and favoring Logan because he makes them so much money. Um, oh, what I did find very funny was the fact that in the video, Logan Paul showed a dead body, but he censored the word shit. <laughs> like, dude, fucking nine-year-olds watch your channel, okay? You should censor the swear words because they're nine, but... You're also showing them a dead body. Like, you need a fucking, a real dead body. You need to have some some standards here. What's what's bad and what's... Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, the swearing thing is just to appease advertisers, not because kids watch his channel. But, I don't know, that just made me laugh for some reason. Fucking swearing's bad, but showing a dead guy's hands is fine. Dude, imagine being that guy. If I... Man, if I, if I was up... That guy's probably up in heaven trying to fucking kill himself again because he's in a Logan Paul vlog. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so I, I think it's fucked. Those are my thoughts on it. And and there you go. It wasn't very funny. Uh, that's why I didn't do a little review on it because I just didn't think I could make it funny because it was just gross. Um, oh, this podcast is going to be a bit of a long one. That's all right. That'll make up for um, me being a little bit late. It's fucking shit me so much that... Uh, that the sorry someone's just mowing outside i hope you can't hear that shit me so much that that happened anyway all right so let's do miscellaneous bit at the end um please don't go to the suicide forest just because you heard this all right uh this one is from harvey the subject is how do i tell dick jokes as a career i figured i would do because it's the start of a new year or i always get questions about stand up and stuff and i I don't like to answer them all the time because it's stuff that I've usually have covered, but because it's the first, the, you know, start of the year, cunts want to chase goals and dreams, I'll indulge you, all right? So, uh, how to tell dick jokes as a career. Um, G'day, cunt. My name's Harvey. I saw your show last year. I thought it was phenomenal. Also keen for the special, blah, blah. Thank you, man. Where are we? Fucking get these compliments out of the way. All right. Anyway, if you couldn't gather from the title, I'm interested in pursuing stand-up comedy as a career. I don't have much experience with stand-up or performing on stage, so I'm going to YouTube and such to start with. Great, uh, great move. That's a definitely a great move, starting online. 
Uh, that's where I started. I started at 18 in high school, just making dumb YouTube videos and the trolling and all that kind of shit. Um, and then I fell into stand-up. Um, I was hoping you could give me some advice on starting to write jokes, performing and creating online content. To give you some background, I'm 17 and I'll be graduating this year. I'm not really sure what I'm doing after. I'm definitely not going to uni straight after because fuck that. Great move. I highly endorse the use of gap years. Please go out into the real world and get a real job that is full-time so you can experience that before you lock yourself into studying for four years in a field or a career that you don't even know you may not like because it's in an office or because it's outside. Those are two things that you cannot even understand or decide if you like until you do them. Go and get a real job in your gap year before you go to uni. It will change your life for the better. Um... To give background, I'm graduating this eight, blah, blah, blah. I've pretty much lost interest in school because let's be real, it's full of dumb cunts anyway. You're probably one of them, as was I. <laughs> um, this is why I've decided to take two or three years to pursue a dumb dream. I have a job where I earn fuck all, but it means I can spend money on the dumb dream. Yes, that's great. Jobs are a tool to fund your stupid dream that probably won't work. I'm not new to editing, so I know my way around Premiere Pro and shit like that. I just wanted to get some help with starting and to know how you started out doing stuff online. If there's anything I missed, which is most likely the case, I'd be happy to follow up. Blah, blah. Cheers for the help if you get to reading this and keep shit up. You're doing awesome. Have a shit one, Harvey. All right. Um, yeah, Harvey, you're basically going around it the, the right way. Um, if you want to be a comedian... There is nothing that you can study. There is nothing that you can learn. There are no courses to help you. The only way to get good at comedy, and this is for YouTube and stand-up, the only way to do it is to do it. It's the only way to learn. And if you go into it knowing this is the most important thing, and I think this is true for probably most skills or anything really, is just know that for the first 6 to, to 12 months, you're going to be shit. You're going to suck. People won't like it. You won't like it because your tastes are up here, but your skill level is down here. Um, so your taste exceeds your skill. And that's a really hard thing until you can catch up. Like I think I'm quite good at stand-up, but the shit that I like is still so much better than my ability so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to catch up to that. So when I do something that I think is fucking awesome, even I'm like, hey, firstly, well done to me. That was great. But it can be so much better because look at Bill Burr or look at Patrice uh, O'Neill or, uh, or Louis C.K. or any one of the greats. You know what I mean? There's a level beyond what I'm currently at, obviously. Otherwise, I would be up there with them. Um, and the same is true when you start, it's just the gap is so much fucking bigger because you're not even as good as me yet. Do you know what I mean? Like you're not even good as someone who's kind of okay at it. You're just fucking shit. So that's a, that's a hard bridge to jump over. But if you go into it knowing that you're going to be bad, I think that helps because that's totally normal. No one's good. And if you want fucking evidence... Go and have a look at the first five videos that I made. Garbage. Awful. And I leave them up there because I love telling people to look at them. Because you can watch them and you can go, fuck, that is not funny. It's shit. You're trying to be edgy and it just sucks. And then compare that to like one of the latest five that I just put out. The difference is huge. And that is because... Not because I was born with it, just because I started in 2012 and now it's 2018. It has been six years and I'm still doing it. That's the only difference between me and someone who sucks is time. Not just time, but doing it consistently for that period of time. Um, so, more specifically, I think that's broad for any kind of skill or whatever. More specifically, with comedy, YouTube videos, just put it out. Content is king, okay? That's that's the main thing that I struggle with. I'm such a perfectionist that I'm like, I can't release it until it's perfect or I need to edit in this difficult thing or whatever the fuck. 
Don't worry about that shit. Put shit out every fucking week, twice a week if you are able to. Just put shit out all the time. Um, I was doing that when I had a job. It's hard. It sucks, but it's possible. Um, and yeah, just look at other people. Look at other people that are better than, better than you. Look at how they edit their videos. There's so many videos on what equipment to use. Don't worry about good equipment until, until you feel like you're, you're worth the equipment upgrade. Um, I was filming shit on a webcam when I started. If you have a phone, that's better than a webcam, okay? So, yeah, I mean, equipment doesn't matter. Just put shit out, be consistent, be shit, and um, you'll get somewhere eventually. And also... Maintain a connection with your fan base and look after them and be truthful. Never fuck your fans over. Never lie to them and always appreciate everything they give you because they do not have to. And if you give that to them, they'll give it back to you. Evidence, my comedy special. I didn't ask for a fucking thing for three years. I put shit out for free and then I asked for help one time and... The people who like me resoundingly responded with an incredibly positive thing. And that's because I think I try to remain truthful with them. And I don't lie to them about if I'm successful or making money or whatever. Like I say it all the time. When I'm making money, I'll fucking let you know. Until then, I'm in my parents' house in the bedroom I have been in since I was born. <laughs> um, and then with stand-up, stand-up is pretty simple. Uh, get up on get up on stage every week, every single week. Get up on stage, and uh, you're gonna suck. And the hard thing about stand up is you will suck in front of people, and you will get an immediate uh, feedback, which is a blessing and a curse. So um, yeah, with stand up, you're just gonna be garbage for like six months for sure. You're probably not going to get much laughter. Everybody else on the bill is going to be better than you. You're going to be performing in shitholes in front of nobody, in front of like five people who don't even want to see comedy. But that's what it is. And I can honestly tell you, stand-up comedy is, the, is one of the best things I've ever done with my life. It shits on videos. It shits on the podcast. There's nothing like people clapping and cheering and yelling out dumb shit and you call them a cunt and everyone else goes, yeah, you fucked him. It's it's amazing. Um so just get up every week. There's groups on Facebook to find comedy rooms um, in Melbourne. It's called the Melbourne Comedy Rooms Hub. You can search that and join it. And it has a list of every single comedy room that runs Monday to Friday, uh, Monday to Sunday. And uh, I think most cities are like that too. I've even found some in London and LA and all that kind of shit. So that's how you get spots. You just message them, be polite. Um, and... Uh, I suppose something that a lot of new people fall into is do not hang out with the losers. Don't be rude, but don't hang out with the guys who suck and who, because those people congregate together. Uh, I learned this when I was doing sales. The people who were doing well and who were making sales and making money either went to lunch by themselves or together and talked about how to make more money and how to make more sales. The people who did not make sales and who didn't want to improve hung out together and talked about, oh, we're not getting sales because Christmas is coming up and no one has any money or we're not getting sales because the product we're trying to sell is shit or blaming all this other stuff rather than being like, oh, I'm not getting sales because I fucking suck at sales. Same thing is true for comedy. Hang out with the people that are better than you, not just in skill, but in, in business and career success. Hang out with the people who are better than you at comedy and better than you at selling tickets because that's a completely different skill. Um, don't hang out with the people who bomb and then blame it on the crowd or bomb and blame it on the night or the room or whatever the fuck. Or, and don't hang out with the people who can't sell tickets and blame the festival or, or blame the internet guys because they cheated because they use YouTube and, and they've been doing it the old way and it's still not working for them. Don't hang out with the losers. Hang out with the people who want to win. Um, and that applies to people who are not successful but are working hard to get there because you want because there's nothing better than coming up with a group of people. That's what I'm telling you, man. 
Nothing better than that. Like me and Luke came from the same comedy room. We met in one comedy room. We both sucked. I hadn't done a festival show. Neither had he. And we came up together and now we have a radio show and we help each other. And every success of mine is a success of his. And every time he wins, I win because if he gets an opportunity, he brings me in. If I get something, he get, he comes in. And, and that's how it works. So collaborate, but but not with sad cunts and don't gossip, don't talk shit about anyone because I can guarantee you it'll come around to the whole industry. I I hear everything that is said about me um, and I know that it, that's true of every comedian. Everyone hears what everyone says, so just don't say anything. Um, and yeah, don't steal jokes. That's all. With, with stand-up, you're going to be shit, but just do it weekly and you won't be shit. Watch a lot of comedy, watch a lot of YouTube videos and keep putting shit out. That's all you can do. Um, oh, I'm fucking dropping knowledge today. We'll do one more email, then I'm going to wrap this shit up. I'll make it a bit longer just to make it up to you guys. All right. What's a good one? Ah, we'll do another stand-up comedy one. This one might be funny. Stuttering stand-up. Uh, G'day, Lewis. I love your stuff and your comedy special was some of the best stand I've ever seen. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry if this is the long email, but I need some advice. I know it's not as exciting as fucking my mum's friend or a vomit fetish, vomit fetish bus drivers, but I really could use your advice. Ever since seeing your special and getting to meet you, even though we didn't talk for long, I started to think to myself, this is what I want to do with my life. Oh man, that's fucking cool. That's really cool because that happened to me when I saw Leno and Woodley. When I, I saw them live and I was like, I don't know what the fuck that is, but I want to do it. That's that's awesome that I'm doing that for you, man. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Um, cool. Uh, this is what I want to do in my life. Just a little bit of info. I'm 15. By the time you read this, maybe 16. Uh, I'm a 15-year-old guy with a mild stutter that I've had for years now. I've always been really into music and I thought I would make a career out of it, but recently I've been thinking about comedy more and more and just wanted to get some advice from my favorite comedian. Thank you, man. Um, Having a stutter, obviously talking is a little bit harder for me as I dread doing presentations in school, speeches and projects, but I'm still a charismatic person who tries to be friends with as many people as I can. Uh, I'm always trying to make people laugh because it's what I love. I've recently hit the point where I've started to imagine myself doing stand-up and I've been thinking about buying a book to write jokes in. Do it. You're thinking about it, do it right now. That's another thing. Buy a book, write down your fucking shitty ideas all the time because and never, never throw them in the bin because I cannot tell you the amount of times where I have thought of a concept, written it down, tried to turn it into a joke but I'm not good enough so I just leave it there and then two years later I go through my old joke books and I'll find an awesome premise and be like oh I know how to make that funny because I'm a better comedian like I think that happened with um if you saw my show this year try and stop me not the special um my joke about uh, going to Thailand and seeing a ping pong show. That joke, I actually wrote in my first year of stand-up comedy, but it just sucked because I wasn't good enough to make it funny. Um, and then I returned to it in year three, took the concept, deleted the joke, and then told the story again in a much funnier way. And it was one of the best jokes of the special. So if you're writing shit down, make sure you hold on to it. Save it in the cloud or write it down and keep the notepad. Just make sure you keep that shit safe because, you know, I still have my joke book from when I was fucking 12 years old, signed by Dave Hughes, literally. And none of those jokes are worth using. But, you know, I like flicking through it (laughs) every now and then. Um, But yeah, that's just a side note. Sorry, distraction from this stuttering dude. Um, I dread doing p- p- presentation. <laughs> Stop, he, did. he doesn't type like that, guys. Sorry, man. Couldn't help myself. I dread doing presentations in schools. Um, where are we? Uh, I'm thinking about buying a book to write jokes in. Having a stutter, though, I don't know if I'll be able to make this work but I guess I could write about stuttering. What I'm asking is what advice could you give me about stand- starting stand-up and do you think someone who stutters could make it? I've seen Daryl Lynch's stand-up and his stutter is worse than mine, but I still wanted to ask your advice. Hope you read this as I tried to make 
the subject interesting. I'll see you on your next tour. Maybe this time I won't be so embarrassed of stuttering to actually talk to you this year. Have a shit one. Cunt. <laughs> Josh. Um, yeah, Josh. Okay. Dude. With the stuttering thing, absolutely, you can be a stand-up comic. I want you to look at your stutter, all right? And it might be there. It might get worse when you get on stage. Whatever. Have your stutter and compare that to the fucking 1920s when someone was black and they wanted to be a stand-up comic and every other comedian was wearing blackface and talking all this racist shit and people would not attend your shows because you were black. There was still incredibly famous black comedians coming out there and succeeding and being very wealthy. If a black dude in the 1920s, when racism was incredibly popular, if he can make it, stutter is nothing. Dude, no one's putting you in chains because you have a stutter. (laughs) You know what I mean? No one's yelling at, oh, you bloody stutterer. You shouldn't have the right to vote. Get him the fuck out of my school. No one's doing that shit. If a black dude in the 1920s can make it in comedy, you can stutter and do it as well. And yeah, I realize that stuttering, oh, but I've got a speech impediment. It's different. Doesn't matter, dude. There, I... I, I bet you could, I could Google it right now and find stuttering stand-up comedians that are successful. The, dude, there's, there's people with dwarfism that do it. Stuttering stand-up. Dude, I, I know lots... Of, I know a few c- comedians in Melbourne that have lisps and they are stand-up. Yeah, Drew Lynch. Dude, this guy's on Conan in 2017. And if his stutter is worse than yours... Just watching this clip. I won't fucking listen to his... Yeah, dude, I'm looking at Drew Lynch. He's a comedian with a terrible stutter and all his clips have like half a million views. Man, if his is worse than yours... Man, that guy... You know what? I've watched 18 seconds of it and his stutter is funny. And he's made it funny. Dude, it can almost be a benefit to you. Do you know what I mean? Like, take my my uh, heckler video. It just hit a million views. Thank you very much. Um, when I put it on Facebook, I didn't write... I, I wrote Australian comedian versus hecklers. And people... Are, and that's a point of difference. People have American comics, whatever... But people are like, oh, an Australian comic? I wonder if he's like Jim Jeffries. I bet he'll say cunt. It's a point of difference. And then people see how tall I am and the way that I dress and they go, fuck, he's different. And it makes you stand out. It doesn't, it doesn't make you funnier, but it makes you stick in people's heads. You can be... Because the biggest problem with stand-up comedy when you're starting out is nobody remembers you. And that's why doing the online stuff is so important. I never would have got this far if I didn't have... YouTube and Facebook and shit because I would do stand-up and no matter how good I was, people don't remember your name. People will fucking remember the stuttering guy. They will go home and if you if you did a good set, of course, they'd be like, man, that stuttering guy was great. They won't remember your name, but they'll remember, oh, that stuttering guy. And then if you ever get on TV and you're, you're there and you're stuttering, people are like, oh, that's that fucking guy I saw. Let's go see him. It's a point of difference, man. And if your stutter is is better than this guy's, this guy's isn't even that bad, then yeah, it should be fine. And and you know, you can do shit like see a speech therapist. I mean, I don't know if that sounds super ignorant or if you've already tried that or whatever, but there's shit, heaps of stuff that you can try to, if you can't get rid of your stutter, you can embrace it and make it funnier. You know, like I've got at least 15 minutes on how freakishly tall I am you, you would have a sick 15 on stuttering and people would be super interested to hear because I think that's the mark of a good stand-up bit is if your story is interesting and I want to hear it before you've put any jokes into it, that's a fuck going to be a fucking good bit if you can make it funny. I want to know about your stutter. I want to know about what's it like living with your stutter. How do you hit on girls? Is it awkward when this happens or whatever the fuck? Any all the, any of these things that I just don't experience because I don't have a stutter, I want to hear. 
you know, that's why gay comedians do so well with straight women. They went, oh my God, what's it like being a gay man? Uh, or, or black comedians are so popular in America because white people see them and go, fuck it, a completely different perspective. You have that, but with a stutter. I want to know what life is like with a stutter. If you can make that funny, fuck man, you'll kill it. So yeah, um, look, you're 15, 16. I mean, there's not too many avenues for even to, to begin stand-up comedy. There's a competition in Melbourne called Class Clowns, actually, that you could enter. Google Class Clowns um, and research that. That's something for kids. But other than that, there's not many too, not too many places that you could perform. I would recommend what I just said to the last cunt. Start doing online shit, man. Start a podcast. Start a YouTube channel. Start making Facebook videos. Whatever the fuck. Start talking about living with a stutter. It, you know, you can do so much shit when you're that age. And also, if you're starting now at 16, you're going to be fucking garbage when it doesn't matter. You're going to be shit and you're going to suck when you're 15 in high school and people will be like, ah, oh, he's just 15. He just sucks because he's young. But but man, when you if you start now and you've been doing YouTube for four years and then you turn fucking 19, man... You'll be so fucking good. You'll be so much better than people like me who started at 18. If you're 18 and you've been doing it for four years, you will shit all over people like me. I started at 18. If you start now, by the time you're my age, 23, you will have been doing it for eight years. No. Because I've been doing it for... You, you will, yeah, if you're 15 now... 23, yeah, eight years, sorry, fucking idiot, can't do math, yeah, dude, start now, start doing YouTube shit, start thinking about bits, look up class clowns, don't worry about your fucking stutter, all it is to me is a point of difference, like when I get on stage, people go, fuck, he's tall, when you get on stage, people go, fuck, he has a stutter, and that's it, people won't be like, hey, you got to stutter, get off stage, they'll just be like, oh, that guy stutters, and that will make them pay attention, it's like if you're incredibly fat, people go, oh, look, a fat guy on stage. He might be funny. Rather than just being the generic fucking white dude who gets up in a t-shirt and jeans and goes, hey, guys, I'm this, and I, I can't get a girlfriend and a job. Oh, I'm a comedian. <laughs> and no one remembers that cunt. But if you go out, get up there and you go, hey, good, good, good guys, people are like, oh, what's going on? Is, is that an act or is that a real stutter? And then you'll start to, and they'll be like, fuck, he's a real stutter. Fuck, he's got a stutter and he's doing stand-up. Fuck, he's also funny. And then right there, people are sucked in. They want to know about your stutter. They want to know about you. And then and then if you do shit, you do your, your fucking material about having a stutter and then you move on to just regular, relatable stand-up comedy, they'll be like, fuck, he can talk about having a stutter and normal shit that relates to me and he's just a good comedian who happens to have a stutter. And there you go. You're on your fucking way. All right? Good luck, Jason. I uh, I don't know. Start doing shit online until you're old enough to start going to bars and performing. Um, as soon as you're 18, start hitting it up. Until then, Class Clowns, it's a stand-up competition in Australia for children uh, in high school. I thought about entering it when I was 15. I wish I did. I didn't. So enter that. Um, yeah, good luck to you both. You can't, all right, sorry, this one was late. Uh, like I said, it wasn't my fault. The fucking card corrupted, but I'm putting this up on Monday. It'll be up, I don't know, depending on my internet. I don't know how long it'll take, but it'll be up by Monday night. Also, so will bi-monthly bull for Patreon people. Um, if you'd like to, uh, see the bi-monthly bull episode on tonight instead of tomorrow night when it comes out publicly, um, consider supporting me on Patreon. It, it makes the podcast better. It makes everything else I do better. It helps me pay people who film shit and help me edit and all that kind of crap. Um, and every dollar that goes into Patreon goes back into the hole. I don't spend it on dumb shit. It just, I just spend it on, well, dumb shit like cameras <laughs> to help make my dumb shit better. So yeah, consider supporting me on Patreon if you want to get early access to everything and help make all that shit better. All right. So I will talk to you next Sunday. Have a shit one.